Hi, good morning, doctors. Uh, uh, today we are on a 27th day of uh, reading Oxford Handbook of General Practice. I am Dr. Sesha, your study buddy, and we are preparing together for MRCGP International AKT exam. Uh, we are at page number 513. A topic today is neuropathy, and let's start reading from this table, page number uh, table 15.4. Common mononeuropathies. Median nerve involvement. The nerve involved is median nerve. And uh, the nerve root is C5 to T1. There is loss of sensation. When a median nerve neuropathy is there, there is loss of sensation over the lateral three and a half fingers of the palm and wasting of the thinar eminence. The inability to flex the terminal phalanx of the thumb implies involvement of the anti-introsious branch of the median nerve. Common causes are trauma, especially the breast, at the breast, lacerations, carpal tunnel syndrome. These are the causes of median nerve neuropathy. Ulnar nerve neuropathy. So, ulnar nerve, the nerve root is C7 to T1. Weakness and wasting of the introsia muscles. Weakness of the abduction of the fingers and claw hand deformity. Wasting of hypothenar eminence. Sensory loss over the medial one and half fingers and ulnar side of the hand. Flexion of uh, fourth and fifth fingers is weak if proximal lesion is present. Trauma or compression at the elbow could be a cause. Trauma at the wrist. Radial. Radial now C5 to T1. Sensory loss is variable but always includes the dorsal aspect of the root of the thumb. Wrist drop and weak extension of the thumb and fingers. There is a wrist drop and this weak extension of the thumb and fingers. Compression against the humerus and trauma. These are the causes. Sciatic nerve, L4 to L2, L4 to S2. Weakness of the hamstring muscles, all the muscles uh, below the knee, hamstring muscles and all the muscles below the knee leading to a foot drop. Loss of sensation below the knee laterally. Back injury or a pelvic tumor causes sciatic nerve damage. Common peroneal nerve injury uh, that is the common peroneal nerve the L4, R, root values L4 to S2 inability to dorsiflex the foot so there will be a foot drop again and ever the foot or extend the toes sensory loss over the dorsum of the foot common causes trauma tibial uh, nerve S1 to S3 Inability to stand on tiptoes, ever invert the foot or flex the toes. So, inability to stand on the tiptoe, invert the foot or flexion of the toes is lost. Sensory loss over the sole. There is a sensory loss over the sole. Sensory loss over the dorsum of the foot, common peroneal nerve. Sensory loss over the sole is tibial nerve. Trauma or entrapment. So, this is again the Dermatomal distribution. Let's see. So, this uh, figure is dermatomes and peripheral nerve distribution. This is regarding the uh, foot. So, the sole of the foot is tibial nerve. The dorsum of the foot will be peroneal nerve, superficial and deep peroneal nerve, sural nerve, median plantar nerve. So this was the picture. So 
so let's read further these are uh, various nerves and their uh, nerve roots so we'll go to the next topic in chapter neurology page number 516 polyneuropathy polyneuropathy generalized disorder of the peripheral nerves including the cranial nerves and the autonomic nerves distribution is bilateral symmetrical and widespread sensory neuropathy presents as numbness tingling or burning sensation often affecting the extremities first glow and stalking distribution or causing clumsiness in handling fine objects like a needle so either you in your question you will be having clumsiness or then burning sensation numbness or tingling sensation affecting the extremities first motor neuropathy presents as a progressive weakness or clumsiness of the hands stumbling or falls on walking respiratory difficulty can progress rapidly examination wasting and weakness most markedly distal marked distally reflexes are decreased or absent causes are listed in table 15.5 we will see that initial investigations of a neuropathy what do you do exclude the common causes check for blood sugar blood glucose full blood count esr urine urea electrolytes creatinine egfr lfts tfts plasma b12 levels autoimmune profile and syphilis serology management treat the if cause if possible involve the physiotherapist and ot if sensory neuropathy care for the feet is important to minimize trauma and consequent disability refer if a cause is not found so you need to refer only if a cause is not found if rapid deterioration or is present admit as an acute medical emergency as ventilation may be needed this is with this was the case when there was a respiratory difficulty because of motor neuropathy which can progress rapidly if there is a rapid deterioration admit as an acute medical emergency specific polyneuropathies charcot marie tooth disease or peroneal muscular atrophy charcot marie tooth disease or peroneal muscular atrophy the pre presence at puberty so this one presence at puberty or early adult life and begins with foot drop and weak legs the peroneal muscles are the first to atrophy the disease spreads to the hands and then arms sensation and reflexes also are decreased unknown cause once diagnosis is confirmed treatment is only supportive million barry syn syndrome or polyneuritis develops within a few weeks of surgery flu vaccination or infection urti flu varicella zoster hsv cmv ebv campylobacter mycoplasma or zika virus so these are the infectious cause of guillain barre syndrome and even after then flu vaccination so other uh, causes are urti flu varicella zoster hsv cmv ebv campylobacter mycoplasma and zika virus in 40% no prespiratory event is found this presence with ascending motor neuropathy it's an ascending motor neuropathy which may advance past proximal muscles are more affected than the distal muscles the trunk respiratory muscles and cranial nerves are commonly affected in the trunk and if suspected admit immediately to the hospital as an emergency ventilation in an itu is frequently required 85% cases make a complete or near complete recovery 10% are unable to walk alone at one years and mortality is 10% polio we will see in page 551 refsum's disease refsum syndrome rare autosomal recessive disorder which presents in the second decade or later with sensory motor polyneuropathy ataxia visual or hearing problems so these are the symptoms in refsum disease sensory motor polyneuropathy ataxia visual and hearing problems treatment involves dietary restriction avoidance of chlorophyll containing foods and plasma pheresis okay causes of polyneuropathy inflammatory causes guillain barre syndrome mo mostly motor polyneuropathy chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy or cdp sarcoidosis metabolic diabetes mainly sensory renal failure may mainly sensory neuropathy hypothyroidism hypoglycemia 
mitochondrial disorders these are the metabolic causes vasculitis polyarteritis nodosa rheumatoid arthritis granulomatosis with polyangiitis malignancy paraneoplastic syndrome especially small cell lung cancer polycythemia rubra vera these are the two malignancies which have polyneuropathy infection hiv syphilis lyme disease leprosy mainly sensory neuropathy is present in leprosy vitamin deficiency lack of vitamin b1 b6 and b12 example alcoholics inherited refsum's disease charcot marie tooth tooth syndrome or peroneal uh, muscular uh, problem and um, porphyrias toxins lead mostly motor neuropathy and arsenic drugs alcohol cisplatin isoniazid vincristine nitrofurantoin less frequently metronidazole and phenytoin so drugs causing neuropathy alcohol cisplatin isoniazid vincristine nitrofurantoin vincristine can cause uh, polyneuropathy reversible less frequently metronidazole and phenytoin others paraproteinemias like multiple myeloma and amyloidosis can cause polyneuropathy 518 speech problems hoarseness page number 914 stammer disorder of rhythm and fluency of speech in which syllables words or phrases are repeated so that is called stammering males to female ratio is 4 is to 1 causes unknown can result in stress and embarrassment young children often short lived stammering usually resolves spontaneously in older children and adults refer to speech therapy dysarthria difficulty with articulation due to incoordination or weakness of musculature of speech is dysarthria language is normal ask to repeat baby hippopotamus or british constitution treat the cause if possible other wise support treat the cause if possible otherwise support with speech therapy and aids to communication assessment and causes of dysarthria table 15.6 the causes are listed we will read over there this phase here impairment of language due to brain damage to the dominant hemisphere the left hemisphere is dominant one for 99% of the right handed people and 60% of the left handers in most cases due to brain stroke or tumor Uh, on the dominant hemisphere rarely due to head injury or dementia classification is given in table 15.7 mixed picture are common treatment speech therapy may or may not be helpful in dysphagia support dysphagia groups aids to communication computers and picture boards myasthenia gravis it's an autoimmune disease antibodies to the acetylcholine receptor cause deficit of the receptors at the neuromuscular junction leading to muscle weakness antibodies are detectable in 90% of the cases male to female predominance is uh, 2 is to 1 associated with thymic tumors and other autoimmune diseases thymic tumors and other autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis sle hyperthyroidism generally follows a relapsing or slowly progressive course if thymoma is present five year survival is near about 30% percent. presentation young adults with easy fatigability of the muscles commonly affected muscles are the orbital muscles causing ptosis and diplopia and bulbar muscles causing slurring of speech act asked to count until 50 so there will be slurring of speech weakness and exasperate is exacerbated in pregnancy infection drugs like beta blockers opioids tetracycline and quinine climate change emotion and exercise pregnancy infection drugs beta blockers opioids tetracycline quinine climate change emotion and exercise management if suspected refer for confirmation by a neurologist and specialist treatment treated with acetylcholine esterase example pyridostigmine treatment is with acetylcholine esterase 
pyridosigmine for myasthenia gravis, immunosuppression with prednisolone, methotrexate or azathioprine, thymectomy leads to remission in 30% of the cases and benefit in another 40% plasma pheresis. Lambert-Eaton syndrome or myasthenic syndrome occurs in association with small cell carcinoma of the lung or rarely an autoimmune disease. Differs from myasthenia gravis by tendency to hyporeflexia. There is a tendency to hyporeflexia here. Autonomic involvement is common. Proximal limb muscles or trunk are most commonly involved. Specialist treatment is essential. So, in lambert eaton syndrome, proximal limb muscles or trunk are most commonly affected. Whereas, in myasthenia gravis, commonly affected muscles are the orbital muscles and the bulbar muscles. Whereas in lambert eaton it is the proximal limb muscles or the trunk that is most commonly involved. Causes of dysarthria. So, table 15.6. Cerebellar disease. Slurring of speech as if drunk. Speech is irregular in volume and scanning in quality. Extra pyramidal diseases. Parkinson's disease. Soft indistinct, indistinct monotonous speech. Pseudobulbar palsy, like in stroke, bilateral stroke, multiple sclerosis and motor neuron disease, there is pseudobulbar palsy leading to alteration of speech, typically nasal speech sounding like Donald Duck, difficulty in swallowing or chewing, tongue is spastic and there is increased in jaw jerk. Difficulty in swallowing or chewing, tongue is spastic and there is increase in jaw jerk reflex. Bulbar palsy, also seen in motor neuron disease. So, in motor neuron disease, both pseudobulbar and bulbar palsy will be present. Bulbar palsy, MND, Gullion Barry syndrome, alcoholic brainstem myelinolysis, primary or secondary brainstem tumors, syringobulbia, polio, and hyponatremia. Speech, quiet, hoarse, or nasal speech, loss of function of the tongue or tongue muscles. Or muscles of tubing or swallowing plus facial muscles, flaccid fasciculating tongue and jaw jerk may be normal or absent. So, speech quiet or hoarse or nasal, loss of function with uh, of the tongue, muscles of tubing or swallowing plus facial muscles, flaccid fasciculating tongue, jaw jerk normal or absent. Pellet palsy, pellet paralysis. Nasal speech, asymmetric or absent gag reflex. Myasthenia gravis, slurring of speech when fatigued. Assessment and classification of dysphasia. Myasthenia gravis, slurring of speech when fatigued. 15.7 Assessment and classification of dysphasia. Assessment. If a speech is fluent, speech is fluent, grammatical, meaningful and apt. If yes, dysphagia is unlikely. Comprehension. If can, can the patient follow one or two or multiple step commands? Repetition. Can the patient repeat a phrase after you? Naming. Can the patient name common and uncommon items? Reading and writing. Usually affected too. If not, question the diagnosis of dysphasia. So, in dysphasia, even reading and writing are affected. Characteristics of dysphasia Broca's dysphasia, Wernick's dysphasia, conduction dysphasia, and transcortical dysphasia. Broca's areas dysphasia or expressive dysphasia. So, this is the motor speech area. So, fluency is not there, repetition is not there, understanding is impaired is not there. Wernick's encephalitis, uh, Wernick's uh, dysphagia, receptive dysphagia, sensory, fluent speech, yes, repetition, no, understanding is impaired, yes, conduction dysphagia. Fluent speech, yes. Repetition is normal, no, because there is a conduction problem between this uh, sensory and motor areas. 
so repetition will be abnormal in all the three broca's wernicke's and conduction defect transcortical dysphagia repetition will be normal whereas this conduction uh, when there is conduction dysphagia speech will be fluent repetition will be abnormal and understanding is impaired no understanding will not be impaired understanding will be normal so they will be able to understand but the conduction from the sensory part to the motor part is not there transcortical dysphagia fluent speech can be present or not be present repetition is normal yes understanding is impaired can be impaired or not be impaired but that will be transcortical dysphagia so in broca's dysphagia there will be the there will be no fluency in the speech there will be no repetition there will be no impaired understanding that means a patient can understand but he cannot repeat or answer your question when it is uh, receptive dysphagia in this the speech will be fluent repetition is impaired because what you are saying he is not able to process and understanding is impaired yes understanding is impaired because what you are saying the sensory area is not able to process it walking problems walking difficulty of legs common symptom in the elderly causes are musculoskeletal problems like osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis osteoporotic fractures fractured neck of the femur osteomalacia pages disease polymyalgia rheumatica psychological problems depression bereavement fear of falling neurological problems stroke parkinson's disease peripheral neuropathy spinal cord compression systemic causes pneumonia uti anemia hypothyroidism renal failure infection hypothermia management treat according to the cause refer if you inadequate support at home and cause warrants admission or no causes found abnormal gait gait means manner of walking abnormal gait can give clues to the underlying problem abnormal movements normal gait is interrupted by abnormal movements example coriform movements ethyroid movements or hemibalismus may indicate the underlying neurological problem example cerebral palsy or huntington's chorea abnormal movements antelagic gait antelagic gait gait adjusts to try to minimize the pain in a joint usually in osteoarthritis of the hip the patient leans towards the affected side and takes a rapid step on that side followed by a slower step on the contralateral side leans towards the affected side take a rapid step step on that side followed by a slower step on the contralateral side so check trel nelenberg sign drunken gait apart from alcohol the other major cause of drunken gait is cerebral lesion features are wide based gait or reeling gait on narrow base feet are often raised too high and placed over carefully with the patient looking ahead if a cerebellar lesion is present then the patient falls on the side of the lesion foot drop patients trip frequently or walk with high stepping gait on examination the patients are unable to walk on the heels and cannot dorsiflex their foot check the ankle jerk reflex causes are common peroneal nerve palsy due to trauma or abnormal knee jerk to trauma there will be a normal knee jerk in that case sciatica ankle jerk reflex is absent l4 l5 nerve root compression ankle jerk may be absent peripheral motor neuropathy alcoholic ankle jerk weak or absent distal myopathy ankle jerk weak or absent motor neuron disease there will be an exaggerated ankle jerk hemiplegic gait style of walking seen in patient with upper motor neuron lesions features arm adduction and internally rotated arm adducted internally rotated elbow is flexed and pronated plus finger flexion plus or minus finger flexion so style of walking seen in patients with uh, human lesions 
features arm is adducted internally rotated elbow is flexed and pronated and finger flexion is there the foot is plantar flexed and the leg swing in a lateral arc the foot is plantar flexed and the leg swing in a lateral arc frontal lesions marked unsteadiness will be present the feet appear to be stuck on the floor causing a wide base shuffling gait parkinson's gait seen in patient with parkinson's disease and other cause of parkinsonism features are shuffling gait short steps with feet barely leaving the ground producing an audible shuffle sound may trip over small obstacles turning and block keeping the neck and trunk rigid and requiring multiple small steps to accomplish a turn gait freezing inability to move feet may worsen in tight cluttered spaces when attempting to initiate a gait fastinent gait flexed posturing as if hurrying to keep up with the feet lack of normal arm swing scissors gait as the name implies the patient walks as if the legs were a pair of scissors associated with spastic paraplegia both legs are held rigid with plantar flexion of the ankle extension of the knee and adduction and internal rotation of the hips so this is a scissors gait or spastic paraplegia both legs are held rigid with plantar flexion of the ankles extension of the knees and adduction and internal rotation of the hips the patient walks on tiptoe and his knees rub together cross or cross during the walking cycle often accompanied by complex movements of the upper limbs to assist in walking movements sensory or ataxic gait loss of proprioception due to peripheral neuropathy or spinal cord disease example cervical spondylosis multiple sclerosis syphilis or combined degeneration of the cord results in an ataxic gait similar to that seen in cerebral heart disease check the rombach test features are a broad based gait with a tendency to stamp down clumsily patient tends to look at the feet throughout the walking cycle and rombach sign is positive waddling gait typically seen in patient with proximal myopathy due to muscular dystrophy other causes are pregnancy congenital dislocation of the hip these are the causes of waddling gait broad based gait the pelvis drops to the side of the uh, in waddling gait which is a broad based gait with uh, the pelvis drops to the side of the leg being raised and uh, patient moves the body and hips to accommodate this resulting in a duck like waddle in the swing phase common accompanied by increased curvature of the lower spine increased forward curvature of the lower spine examination of the gait note the abnormal sign any aid or assistance required first note the abnormalities of the gait and any aid or assistance is required make sure that you can see the legs well as the patient stand up from the chair without support if able to do so that then repeat with the feet together and with eyes closed as the patient to stand still with the feet together if able to do that as the patient to close the eyes and see what happens rombach sign as the patient to walk normally for more than 5 meters turn around and walk back as the patient to to walk heel to toe testing for cerebellar disease as the patient to walk heel to toe testing for cerebellar disease as the patient to stand with the feet together with eyes open testing for cerebellar and posterior column function with eyes closed testing the posterior column function on toes alone impossible with s1 lesions on heels alone impossible with l4 l5 lesions other moment problems page number 522 abnormal gait cramps painful muscle spasm common especially at night after an exercise rarely associated with disease sole depletion muscle ischemia and myopathy forearm cramps suggest a motor neuron disease night cramps may respond to quinine bisulfate 300 mg noctane 
two times a weekly for three months. So two times in a week. Quinine bisulfate for night cramps. Dystonia. Prolonged muscle contraction producing abnormal postures or repetitive movements. Examples of dystonia are spasmodic torticollis. Head is pulled to one side and held there by contracting sternocleidomastite. Treat with a massage, heat and analgesia and physiotherapy. Massage, heat, analgesia and physiotherapy. Blepharospasm. Involuntary contraction of the orbicularis. If troublesome, consider short term management with dizepam. But be careful to avoid dependence or refer for treatment with botulinum toxin. Writer's cramp. The spasm of the hand and forearm muscles on writing. Writer's cramp. Spasm of the hand and forearm muscles on writing. Generalized dystonia. Primary generalized dystonia is usually genetic. Specialist treatment for neurologic gist is essential. First line drug treatment with levodopa. If that is ineffective, an anticholinergic drug. Example. Trihexyphenidyl can be helpful in controlling muscle spasms and tremor. So generalized dystonia also there is leodopa is the first line drug. And if it is ineffective then anticholinergic like trihexyphenidyl can be helpful in controlling muscle spasms and tremor. Other second line treatments include clonazepam, te tetrabenzene, baclofen, botulinum toxin injections. Deep brain stimulation may also be helpful in generalized dystonia. Secondary dystonias. Symptoms of dystonia that can result from drugs or other medical conditions include drug-induced dystonia, acute dystonia or tardive dyskinesias, dystonia associated with cerebral palsy, cerebral palsy, dystonia associated with Parkinson's disease, dystonia associated with other brain injury or disease, and dystonia associated with metabolic conditions, example Wilson's disease. Secondary dystonia, symptoms of dystonia that result from drugs or other medical conditions includes drug-induced dystonia, acute dystonia or tardive dystonia, dystonia associated with cerebral palsy, dystonia associated with Parkinson's disease, dystonia associated with other brain injury or disease and dystonia associated with molly conditions like Wilson's disease. Tardive dyskinesia, involuntary tubing or gimacing movements resulting from long-term neuroleptic treatment, example chlorpromazine, metoclopramide and plocropyrazine are also possible causes. Withdrawal of the drug implicated if no symptom improvement after 3 to 6 months consider te tetrabenzene 20 to 50 TDS per oral. So it's a treatment tetrabenzene and tardive dyskinesia. Remains the treatment for tardive dyskinesia. Caused by drugs, treated by drugs, probosine, metoclopramide, and plocropyrazin. PMP, CMP drugs. <laughs> Myoclonus. Sudden voluntary. Involuntary focal or jerky general jerks, focal or general jerks, myoclonus may be normal, especially if occurs while falling asleep. Other causes include neurodegenerative diseases like crucible Jacob disease, myoclonic epilepsy, benign essential myoclonus, generalized myoclonus beginning in childhood as muscle twitches may be inherited as autosomal dominant. Asterixis. Metabolic flap, liver failure, and uremia. If needed, treat with sodium valparate or clonazepam. Take a specialist advice. Dyspraxia. Impairment of performance of complex movements despite preservation of ability to perform their individual components. So test by asking to perform, uh, perform everyday tasks. Ask you dress and undress, copy complex hand movements and do familiar sequence of movements, example head, shoulder, knees and toes. So when a person cannot do the complex movement while they can do the individual uh, movements, then it is dyspraxia, childhood developmental coordination disorder, 894. Adults, 
most common uh, causes are so in uh, adults most common cause of dyspraxia are uh, stroke space occupying lesion involve rehabilitation services and ot dressing dyspraxia unable to dress correctly construction dyspraxia difficulty to assemble objects or drawing asked to draw a five pointed star gait dyspraxia gait disorder although the lower limb function normally more commonly among the elderly tremor this is a very important topic tremor resting tremor presence at rest but abolished on voluntary movement most common causes parkinson's disease there is resting tremors and uh, where when the tremor is rhythmic intentional tremor irregular large amplitude tremor worse on movement example reaching for something typical of cerebellar disease so intentional tremor large amplitude tremor worsening on uh, movement reaching out for some cerebellar disease is the cause tremors on movement tremors on movement thyrotoxicosis anxiety benign essential tremor inherited and drugs and beta agonist cause fine tremor movement abolished at rest tremor abolished at rest alcohol and beta blockers may help with essential benign essential tremors alcohol and beta blockers help with beta uh, benign with these tremors so tremors on movement and abolished at rest resting tremors in parkinson's disease intentional tremors uh, tremor increases in amplitude when you're reaching out for something cerebellar disease tremor on movement is essential tremor it is abolished by rest alcohol and beta blockers asterixis intermittent lapses of assumed posture may involve arms the neck the jaw the tongue eyelids usually bilateral absent at rest and asynchronous on each side causes of asterixis are liver failure clapping tremors heart failure respiratory failure renal failure so all the failures and hypoglycemia and barbiturates cause asterixis atetosis slow confluent non rhythmic purposeless movements of the hands and tongues and fingers movements of the hands tongues fingers or the face causes include cerebral palsy and connectiveness atetosis rhythmic movements of the hands tongue fingers and face chorea non rhythmic jerky purposeless movements especially the hands with voluntary movements possible in between them most common causes are cerebral palsy huntington's chorea and sydenham chorea cause of chorea sydenham chorea huntington's chorea and cerebral palsy balismus and hemibalismus Large amplitude involuntary flinging movements of the limbs may occur after a stroke in Huntington's disease or with high doses of levodopa for Parkinson's disease. Levodopa for Parkinson's disease. Ticks. Brief repeated stereotactic movements which are able to be suppressed voluntarily for a while. Common in children and usually resolve spontaneously. Consider clonazepam or clonidine if ticks are severe. Gilsey-Tourette syndrome, page 889. That's all for today, doctors. So uh, we will uh, stop here. We'll continue from dizziness and giddiness tomorrow. So we are at page number five twenty three. We will continue from five twenty three tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good day.